Once upon a time, wide receivers were like any other position in football, just part of the machinery. To be properly prepared, a receiver must be ready for all types of catches, not just the perfect pass. The only answer I know is to practice. Terrell Eldorado Owens was part of a new breed, like Michael Irvin, Chad Johnson, and Randy Moss, type A personalities who demanded the ball and craved the spotlight. They ain't ready for this. I'm in a league of my own. They ain't ready for me. It was a far cry from Terrell's upbringing in rural Alabama. Mr. T, how you doing? Growing up in a small town, I stayed with my grandmother. She raised us how she was raised, and that was very, very strict. She didn't allow us to go outside of the yard, go any further than the mailbox. She didn't allow kids to come in the yard. Um, she didn't want me to play any sports because she, she felt that me being out of her eyesight, um, that was a way and a means of us getting in trouble. You wanted to be a dancer early on. I mean, I wanted to be a dancer too, but zero rhythm. Worst dancer in my family. So those dreams ended quickly. Well, I think dancing was one of those things that we grew up, that was part of our culture. Pretty much the childhood figure at that time was Michael Jackson. Absolutely. I mean, who didn't like Michael Jackson? And so I had a jerry curl. I had longer hair than I do now. And one of the first competitions you won was a dance alike okay. contest of Michael Jackson, 25 bucks. It was a $50, don't short my $25. $50. Yeah, $50 uh, gift certificate. When I look back, that was kind of like me really kind of coming out of my shell, and I did, probably didn't even realize that. I had no idea. This is how clueless I was to really playing football or anything beyond that. When I went to UT Chattanooga, I thought I was going to UT Knoxville. I had no idea. Really? I was, I was, yeah. I thought I was going to go to camp and see a bunch of orange and white everywhere. Sure, yeah. Uh, Play here in Rocky Top. <laughs> they don't play that in Chattanooga. No, not at yeah. all. Um, but the that moccasins. was exactly. But I never thought I would play beyond the collegiate level. I mean, I didn't even start. Uh, maybe one or two games my senior year. You're in the Hall of Fame, but you didn't start at UT Chattanooga? No. That's what a lot of people don't know about me. They saw kind of like the end product of what I became. That's it. Stay with it now. Four more. After three years, the 49ers' third round pick became yes, a receiver that was hard to miss. Well, look at Terrell Owens. Oh, yeah, he is just a beast. And Adonis in tights, driven by three Ds. I have it right here in my leg. It's desire, dedication, and discipline. I had a desire to be or do something, but I didn't know what it took until my third year in the league. Wild card weekend, the San Francisco 49ers and the Green Bay Packers. Third year is when I made the big catch against Green Bay. One of the most famous catches uh, in NFL history, the catch two, if you will. Right. But before we get to that play, Terrell, it was a pretty tough day at the office, right? Four Absolutely. drops. Wide open is Owens and dropped it. What in heaven's name is going on with Terrell Owens today? John Madden wasn't maybe so kind to you on the broadcast. I don't know that I've ever seen Terrell Owens play as poorly as he is today. Tell me what happened that day prior to the catch two. I had never played in any playoff games in high school or college. Just got caught up in the moment. I mean. I didn't think any moment was too big for Terrell Owens. I didn't think it was possible. But coming from a small program, I think I got a little bit overwhelmed and put a little bit pressure on myself to perform well. My receiver coach, Larry Curtis, he goes, look, don't worry about the drop, go to the next play. He was like, watch it all the way to your hands. And I remember I ran an out route. I watched the ball all the way to my hands, Peyton and I still, still dropped, dropped it. it. I still dropped tough it. Day. And now, yeah, you're talking about a tough day at the office. Well, it's all or nothing now. Eight seconds to go, third down. San Francisco will have one crack at it. Young almost falls down, throws to the end zone. Oh! I saw that play develop, the play before that. And the play before that, it was all go double comeback. And so Steve threw the comeback to JJ and it almost got picked off. Almost intercepted by Newsom. I was in the slot on that same particular play and I ran toward the safety down the middle and I was wide open. And came back to came that. Came back, 
this time we have to take a shot to the end zone with the amount of seconds that's left on the clock. And so I'm like, man, I'm gonna run the route the exact same way. I basically split that cover two. And when I turned my head, the ball was, right it was already there. There was no room for error. Right. Steve Young threw that ball in the most perfect place and, and I caught it. He hasn't held on to anything and put in his finger all day and he makes the winning touchdown catch. I don't believe it. One of the greatest finishes in 49er history. Pretty emotional after the game. Absolutely. Was it because of the drops earlier and the way the game finished, it just kind of poured out? That played a big part in it, but yeah. immediately when I made that catch, I thought about my grandmother. Hmm. What she's always taught me is like always have faith, you know what I mean? No matter what. You never gave up. You never gave up. Faith is believing something that, you know, that you don't think will happen. For me, during the course of that game, I relied heavily on my faith. I just kept plugging away. Coach Dungy always talked about perception and reality. For some reason, people think Terrell Owens, oh, he, you know, he caused a lot of problems. It's just not true. I mean, you never got in trouble off the field. I mean, it, yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a misperception. You can't judge a book by its cover. A lot of people said I'm selfish, I'm arrogant, I'm cocky because of how the media has portrayed me. I listened to it and I heard it, but I know who I am at heart. And so it didn't deter me from going out there and being who I was on the football field. They say Randy Moss, Mr. Clay. <laughs> take another look. Off the field, right now I'm Terrell. But when I put on that uniform, I got ready to play, it was almost like I transformed into T.O. It's like a Marvel comic. You know, you got Peter Parker and he's Spider-Man. You got Incredible Hulk, David Banner. Don't and, forget about Aquaman. I love Aquaman. Yeah, and so uh, that was it. Get your popcorn ready. T.O. was so selfish, he was always blocking for other receivers and running backs. Everybody sees you, you're catching all the passes right. and all the stats, but you love to block, which meant you love to play football. I, I, I love to block. Good job on that block, man. I wasn't a four or five star uh, athlete coming out of high school. So being physical, whatever you needed to do to get on the football field, if I went in, most of the time, it wasn't a pass play, so I went in and I had to block. And so that was one of the things I took from high school, I did it in college, and obviously at the professional level. Garrison Hurst on okay. his famous 96-yard run yep. in overtime, 90-0. Guess the Jets. That play does not happen without two critical blocks that you made on that play down the right sideline. Comes down to the 30, he's down to the 20, he's down to the 10, he's down to the 5, he's down to the end zone! Touchdown! <laughs> Touchdown, 49ers! You talk about being a complete receiver, I think if everybody just watched that play, for me that signifies who I am as a person and who I was as a football player. T.O. was so selfish, he suited up for Super Bowl 39, seven weeks after breaking his leg. It looks like his leg gets caught up underneath him, and that's all Philadelphia needs, right? Terrell, I got to tell you, most guys who break their leg don't play in a Super Bowl seven weeks later. Yet, you go out and have nine catches for 120-plus yards against the Patriots. For me, I understood the magnitude and what really rolled on this season was obviously me being there. Tell Is me he he's a not factor? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, that was the big question coming in, and I think it's been answered already. They can't stop. And I'm gonna have a leg and they can't stop. I feel like I was a true team player, um, despite, you know, the perception. The Eagles ultimately lost, but nobody blames T.O. for that. 